Ooh, what's up guys? Of course, welcome to an Arpokemon Wi-Fi battle with Jules Drool, of course, the Scarender. And today we're going up against Esquilo, and this is actually a battle I've been uploaded before, but I decided that to uh, make this post commentator because I think it kind of needed that touch to showcase my thought process, plus my opponent actually uploaded this battle on his site too, so I really want to link that, and you know, really, really encourage you guys to check him out. He's an upcoming PocketTuber and I wish him all the luck and uh, you know getting through that. It's it's a tough process, it really is, but it's a very fun challenge and you know always great to showcase one's battles. Now going into the teams here, um, I had really no big idea besides Sick Web and I won a UU match and I obviously did not bring a whole lot of UU. Um, my opponent brought Explode, um, ooh, Murkrow was low. <laughs> Oh damn it, just can't find a word for it. The Mandibus, damn it, Arcanine, Tank Road, Blastoise, and Hiriyama. I myself using Mazim, Sangus, Ralligator, Lexray, uh, Ariados, and of course Embo. So, quite mixed team from my side. Uh, I think I have 4 NU, 1 RU, and 1 UU. But still, you know, the balance is there. And my opponents have really, really good balanced team here. And uh, I had really no idea how this battle was gonna go. I knew that he has nothing that could stop the stick web, so that was something going in mind besides the defog. But really now, I need to play real aggressive and hope to break something before he breaks me by his stamina alone. So, with all of this, my guys, let's go! So right, and also consider his team, I actually decided to start with Maltium. Maltium is scarred, so I knew it could probably outspeed the majority of his team and hopefully just a significant amount of damage. Now, he will stop or start with Hiriyama, and I had no real reason for really switching out there, because I was predicting something like Fake Out, and even if it didn't go for that, I was still locked into U-Turn. I have Tinted Lens, which means I still will do a neutral amount of damage on it, which would have been great. Now, he just switched out to the Mandibus, and Mandibus is just, you know, that kind of wally, like, there is nothing for me to really do in here in Rocky Helmet, but actually do more damage than I'll usually do with my U-turn, and that's really bad, I really will down my mods in Manimal, I still broke away from losing it. Now, I will go into Hydar, forcing him out, because I do pack the Flare Blitz, and I'm gonna do a double switch here, actually predicting him to bring the Blastoise. Now, he will bring Sima, the Arcanine, and uh, showing that it's Intimidate, means that it's probably, and I'll say probably, isn't um, the offensive set, so I'll go to 4 Deluxe Ray. Like I said, I did break Blastoise, and basically with that in mind, I was thinking that I could be able to outspeed here and go for Wild Shards. Now, Luxray is bulky, and he's not a Choice Bandit set, which actually makes me, well, able to live. A Choice Bandit set would have defeated me, but the change here will kill us, and we both lose as a major sweeper. Luxray was definitely very important for my team, and so was his Arcanine to my team. So both of us losing our key sweepers here, really really cool, really, they really killed each other with recall damage alone. Now he will switch back to new to diet, and um, I really was predicting something like that. And I'm just gonna go for protect, because I was really predicting the, of course, the beautiful fake out. Now after this I do decide here to uh, go for a toxic, predict him to switch out. Uh, I do find out later here that he actually had guts and not thick fat, so that was really stupid of me. Now, I was lucky of course, and ca catching his exploit off guard. Now, I do decide to go for deck because I do suspect this thing to be specs, and um, I go for protect and hoping he doesn't go for boom burst, but really now he has no reason not to do that. But he shows me the hyper voice, and that's good, because I knew I can take um, water pulse from a claw lister, um, so I knew that I could live one of those hyper voices with stabbing bound and set up my stick web. Now, that was still kind of risky. I mean, he still has the, um, um, what would you call it, the mandibus, uh, which could take about the stick web, which is really, really bad. Now, predicting that uh, I'm probably gonna go for protect, uh, he's gonna switch to his mandibus. I just decided to go for toxic. I'm not really farting enough, it's more in the process that I thought it was very likely for him to switch out to mandibus. And I have to stay in, I went for stick web, and um, because I don't want to take the defog, I really, really want to bring those stick webs so close. Now, he does go for the foul play, you know, that's actually really good. Um, no judgment there, it was definitely the right play to make. He was definitely predicting me to keep setting up stick webs, and that will just whittle down the, 
mad about the loan and fought was something that we didn't really want to risk. Now we'll bring the Iron Garter, which is a Feraligator. And I do decide to go for Agility, you know, afterwards, seeing this battle again, I don't really know why I did that. Uh, I definitely left him freely here to go for um, a Defog, uh, showing, of course, um, the Agility means that I'm probably, most likely, are the special set, and uh, with Sheer Force Life Orb, it really hurts, and there is no way in hell that Manabas is going to take this. And um, that's good, that's good, that's really good. Uh, Iron Guard definitely outspeed everything in his team, like I said, Kind of redundant of me going for sick weapons in the given circumstance. Now, he will showcase his Mega Blastoise here. And this thing packs the, of course, Fake Out. Which I did not see coming. I really thought it was really small of him hanging, having a set like that. Now, I do believe a Dark Pulse would have taken me out from this position. Since I'm not invested. But I force go for the Blast. Do miss it, sadly. And the door pulls from the Blastoise. Like I said, they will kill me because I'm still a free alligator and that's still a Blastoise. So the Gen 1 starter is coming through. And I'm just gonna bring my Mocha Lot and doing hard damage with the Giga Impact. Thinking that it would probably most likely would kill me. Now he just decided he had to go for Explode. And like I said, Giga Impact maybe wasn't the best option now thinking about it. But just wanted to hurt something badly. And it doesn't do enough. It hardly does. Like I said, I just wanted some kind of residual damage here going. And um, I'm of course here to recharge and he decides to just kill me. Which is completely fine. Like I said, there, given the amount of the position we were in, uh, I say that's a fair exchange too. Consider that none of these Pokemons are doing some real work. Neither of us are doing some real work with those kind of Pokemons. Now we'll bring the Hadar. Uh, my, of course, Embor, and he'll go to his needed diet. Now, need diet here, I was really willing this guy to, of course, go for the obvious move, which is a fake out, and really just give him some uh, denting damage on me. If anything, so just gonna go to Hulk, the Sangus, because I was thinking that was probably the safest move for me to make. Now, a close combat there would probably have destroyed me, but, but yeah, it did work this time, and of course, a facade. He's just going to eradicate this Iriyama, get out of here! <laughs> Take your fat somewhere else. But really now, Sangus will probably be like my key Pokemon here to do something with Luxray gone. So he's gonna go to his annoying B, and um, at this point I was thinking that I'm probably better off going for knockoff and pretty much shutting that thing down so I could force myself to another move with my Embor because I was really back on losing Sangus here and um, I couldn't switch out, and it felt the same way when for Sleep Powder predicted me to switch out because I didn't maybe want to, didn't want to lose my Sangus. Like I said, I am in a foddering move. I wouldn't say I am in that, but showcasing the set this Pokémon is shows me it's a much much more defensive set, which means that my Sangus actually can do some nice nice work here. And with that Toxic damage, I do see that I have a chance of living another round of um, Toxic. And since he won't have a Pokemon out once I kill this tank growth, uh, the leads he won't impact me. Now, I do believe I'll live with a slither of health here. And it comes down to, of course, the Tuck and Roll, the monster, the Blastoise. And I was really predicting him here to go for a layer of, not a layer, a fake out. Thinking that I could preserve. Sangus and thinking really I could probably outspeed or we live a water pulse. I do decide to go to Hader and it goes for fake out luckily for me and yeah, with reckless and whatnot the wild charge will actually be enough to kill the Blastoise. Which I really didn't see coming. So it's like 2 0 in my favor and it came down pretty darn close. I think my opponent made some good calls, but I also played really really risky and I think I played risky enough to come out of his comfort zone that he started to play safe in the end there, and that is actually the reason I win, because he definitely had a superior matchup. So, yeah, I mean, like I said guys, I think my opponent really, really had this game in the bag, to some extent, but like I said, not having Boomers and X-Blood really made a quite a big opening, and the stick web was definitely, I wasn't really sure if the m would without speed or not, and I think that was the reason I switched out to begin with, because I was really debating whether or not the Blastoise was an in investor or not, it definitely wasn't, and my Embor definitely wasn't either. But in contrast to uh, what a choice of Bandit Wild Charge can do, I'll say it kind of worked out. But like I said, my opponent plays a fairly good game here, through and through. And I think he played it safe because he was really, really um, 
not having anything against Sangu's that late game. Of course, Facade doing way more damage than a wall really can deal with. I mean, the only thing really stopping a Sangu's once it is going, besides priority move, is actually being able to tank more than two hits from it. And it just isn't that easy. And I think it's Tanger of not being well, a more aggressively built made the opening really, really much bigger than it should have been. And like I said, I couldn't really switch an Embor because I knew that the Blastoise was really safe coming in. And with Regenerator on Tangrove, I just I had to keep going. And it worked my favorite this time, but it might just have been the very same call that would not have ended in my favor. Like I said, Eslo played a fairly good game and it um, was, was a really good battle. I was glad that the team kind of works and I was glad to go up against him in a brawn that I know he's comfortable with because he's a very good battler and I do encourage you guys, like I said, to check him out. Um, I hope he keeps going, he's in the LBA and Jim, yeah, his channel is definitely, I hope it picks up soon because, like I said, he's a good battler and he definitely needs more people to see that. And yeah, I think that will do it for today. Uh, like I said guys, I am still on vacation but hopefully I will be able to upload a few more battles and I will keep having guys coming in to help me out with some videos and I want to thank everybody for helping me out with that. Honestly, so anyway guys, I want to thank you for watching, as always, of course, make sure to leave a like if you like this battle, and if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, and remember guys, the sky's limits, until next time, see you then, bye.